Welcome to Wonder Space. It's great to have you on board. My name is Steve Cole, and over the past 75 episodes, I have been asking the same six questions to amazing people from around the world. The questions orbit around wonder and stories of hopefulness, and the setting for each journey is this shared window on the space station from where we see everything from a different perspective. Before we introduce our guest this week, our friends at asknature.org are going to help us to re-wonder. In the rich foliage of a cherry tree, a caterpillar is turning a leaf into a tube-shaped shelter. The cherry leaf roller begins along the underside, biting chunks out of the tough central vein to allow the leaf to be more easily rolled up. She then begins to exude silk and attaches one end of the fiber to the tip of the leaf, stretches it out like a rubber band, and attaches the other end to the underside some 10 millimeters away. She swings her head back and forth, repeating the action countless times. Each strand creates a tiny amount of pull, and together, many strands create enough tension to cause the leaf to start to curl. After several hours, she seals up the sides, locking herself in a cozy shelter to slowly eat the rolled up layers of leafy goodness out of sight and reach of predators. Our orbit this week will take us across both North and South America. And to experience these views with us in this ultimate window seat, we welcome Andres Roberts. Andres is an educator, leadership advisor, and is the founding partner of the Bio Leadership Project, a movement to help transform human systems and the paradigm of leadership by working with nature. In his TEDx talk, he suggests that making nature our guide might be the most important innovation of our times. The full-length interview with Andres can be heard on the Wonderspace podcast, which can be found on our website and on most podcast platforms. For this video orbit, he answers three of our six questions. And I start by asking Andres to give us a glimpse into his life story so far, with an emphasis on what he is doing currently. I was born in Colombia and my folks, my dad, my mum, my grandmother, I, they all gave me a sense that I was all right, you know, that I that I belonged, and and I that's always stayed with me. And if I say today, if that's one thing I could give my daughter, or the main thing I'd love to give my daughter, a sense of belonging, that's big. I've always had questions around wholeness. I've always had questions around how we connect to the bigger story in life and how we feel whole ourselves. And I think maybe that comes from having lived in different places as a boy. And and I think maybe that links to, well, another thought is I've always been a bit of a rebel. I've always felt like I wanted to do something a little bit different to the main system. And maybe that's where those things stitch together because I've come to believe that the dominant story of life today is one of disconnection rather than an understanding of interconnection. Um, I've been really lucky to learn from people who have a capacity to heal and connect and um, build resilience in very beautiful ways. And I, and I had a moment in my life where to quote the Leonard Cohen quote, you know, there was a big crack, but I got to learn about change and growth. And the heart of the Bioleadership Project speaks to the fact that we've come to live life today in organizations, in cities and communities in a way that's very disconnected from the whole. It's disconnected from nature. We live life disconnected from each other. So with the Bioleadership Project, we work to help change the story of human development and human progress by saying what what would lo life look like if we authentically connected with nature um, what if we rekindled a culture and a worldview of interconnection and care for all of life and 
the Bioleadership Project is about supporting many kinds of movement and experience and change process that starts from that place. So many thoughts and possible things to say come to mind with this, but um, over the last two years, we've set up something which we've called the Bioleadership Fellowship. And it's a call for people all around the world to come and be part of a community with each person holding a question or a project of potential change or of good work for people and planet by working with nature. And it's through that that I've got to meet already 80 people and more, each of whom is carrying a story where they genuinely are doing something for the good of this life um, in so many beautiful and creative ways. And just, just last week we held um, a virtual Pecha Kucha session where we had four or five fellows each present the story of what they're working on. And I, I mean, I wish I could name every single one of the fellows, but Kai, if you ever hear this, or if, you know, we hear it, a woman in Kenya who is bringing deep um, feminine wisdom, the know-how of doulas, regenerative farming, social change, you know, all of these things together to support a different way of helping people grow in the world and so many other people in this fellowship every day give me hope and and I think the the thing is that um, something we constantly say with the bioleadership fellowship nobody can do it alone it doesn't matter if you are you know the secretary general of the UN whether you are Patagonia as a business whether you're an organic farmer in India you can't do it alone uh, but what we're doing is starting to connect threads of connection across communities that are really committed to making change happen. And and all of a sudden you start to see that cultures are shifting. Um, there's so much work to do, but the fact that the dots are getting connected is what gives me buckets of hope. I think the thing that I'm most experimenting with right now and that I'm learning about all the time is just the art of letting go um, like I feel like change isn't possible growth can't be possible maturity without somehow letting go a little bit of who we were of what we knew of where we're going of getting it right and um, I feel like the world is so pressured. You know, we live in such intense times and times where we feel like we have to get things right, where we have to fix things, where we have to be clever or quick. And, um, and I'm just noticing that whenever I try to let go a little bit more, it helps me. And whenever I... And with people and suggest we do a little bit of letting go then it it shifts it shifts the quality of how things move um so there's something in the potential and in the emptiness of letting go that feels useful To find out more about the work of Andres, go to wayofnature.co.uk and bio-leadership.org. To engage with the previous 75 Wonder Space episodes, go to our website, ourwonder.space. I want to thank Andres for joining us on Wonder Space, and I hope you can join us next week for more wonders and stories of hopefulness.